understand what it is to condemn oneself and to punish oneself. I yeah. know that very well. You're really good at it. Yes, yeah. I'm very good at Join it. Join the club, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so with all of that, and um, I have spent time now letting go of that, and it took different ways of just relaxing and just because I knew when I realised that I was escaping through that because I didn't need to deal with it, I just beat myself up mm -hmm. and then I didn't have to feel anything except being beaten up. I got into sort of an anger but I knew I was angry because I realised I've been angry all my life probably and, and then I did all these things of facing the fears and I did the movies and my light law attractions and it's coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And right now, I feel like I'm one big whole fear. And it's like I realise in this state of fear, there's a couple of things going on that um, I'm so afraid of everything. My whole life is a reaction through all these fears um, that being so scared of everything, I'm also beginning not to be scared, if you know what I mean. You're desensitising yourself to your own fear. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Because <laughs> I was wondering, because the processing hasn't started yet. I've just got to the huge fear state. And um, I was wondering how to get down further onto that. But now I see the fears, because before it was totally head in the sand thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, but I'm aware now that I'm afraid this, this, this. And the list gets bigger and longer and longer and longer. And each time I write more about it, it gets more, you know, involved. Yeah. So, um, yes, it's like being afraid of my fears almost. It's like, you know, I can't, I, I probably can go further with the fears. But I'm wondering, sometimes I'm so overwhelmed with it all, you know, like, oh, where will I go with this? Um, and I understood that one way that it, it's the soul expanding, but at the same time, it's like, it's so huge that I can't move. Is that now, how do I, you know, go from there to the grief? Because it's just, gets bigger and bigger and, and I'm so scared that it's going to explode and I'm just going to go splattering everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, let can it I, explode. <laughs> can I just ask how many other sort of you feel exactly the same way as just what got described there? Quite a few. So you've got quite a few friends, right? Do you want to answer that one, Brad? Because it's sort of the line of what you've been dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Because yeah. Mary's been in a very similar state. Uh, feeling exactly the same kind of feelings. Feeling like the fear of everything is just overwhelming. Yeah. And, and in that place, I just, I lived in that place. It, and that's, that's what I call living in your fear. I'm afraid of everything. I can tell you what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of this, who we are, all of you. We're all gonna, I'm going to be attacked. It's all going to, you know. I'm going to die. We'll, he'll be dead. I'll be alone. Uh, all of that. So I could tell you all of that for about eight months. Anytime anyone had asked me an emotion, yep, I'm afraid of all these things. But I wasn't processing any of them. In fact, I was living in them and I was letting myself be defined by them. So the first thing I did was realise that 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 wasn't helping anything and actually knowing what I was afraid of d d wasn't actually helping my soul at all if I wasn't doing anything with it except saying, oh, I can't feel that because oh, then I'll just open my heart to you and you'll die anyway. And, you know, I was using my fears as a way to get away from everything else. So she found that she was using her fears as an excuse. Does that make sense? We often do this. We use our fears as an excuse to get away from acting. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and one day AJ said to me, when are you going to let all the balls drop? You're just juggling everything, you're keeping everything, you know, just where it is, just so you can just manage everything. When are you just going to let it all drop on the ground? That's why I said just let it explode. Because you, you've got to feel how it feels to feel. I've got all of these fears. I'm absolutely terrified. God, how can I get through this? That I, it really helped um, acknowledging how afraid I was, how alone I felt, and how overwhelmed I felt by it all. 
actually helped me take a step closer to God and God reliance because I just sat with this is how it is and it's very hard like I, grief overwhelmed me in that place and still does you know the fact it, it was a feeling of hopelessness because of all of that but I, I had to recognize firstly that what I was doing just living in the fear wasn't helping me and I had to I guess reach a place where I wanted to feel no matter what I was going to feel there's also this this part of this phase was <coughs> for Mary was and it's been the same for myself where you're actually willing to cr cry about how afraid you are yeah. so most people are not willing to cry about how afraid they are what they do is they feel their terror and they feel their fear but they're not willing to actually go into tears about how afraid they are and once Mary started to allow herself to go into the tears about how afraid she was then some of her fear started getting released does that make sense and so what I've noticed happen with Mary over the last four months is that as, as you can imagine Mary's got lots and lots like I've had too lots and lots of fears to release to, to, to on the path and the more you're allowing yourself to cry about how afraid you are the less your fear becomes and the more you allow the grief you see the fear is there because you're afraid of the grief you're afraid of the tears in the end you're afraid of how overwhelming those tears are going to be once you, once you start crying about how afraid you are you're starting to let the tap go on what you're actually afraid about does that make sense? yes the unfortunate thing for me is that I do understand that um, and because I know it it's like I knew I was living in it and I got to that point where I said I'm living in this and I'm escaping in living in it because you explained at one time the difference of processing and, and living mm -hmm. and and then I, I realized too that I'm so afraid of the grief underneath because I know my life and it's just horrendous for me and so I know that and then I do talk to God and I do try to cry about my fear of every single thing you can imagine but I still feel that I'm wondering if it's I just have to keep doing that you know because I I've only just come to this point actually mm. you know and so do I just keep doing that well you've seen yourself get out of your anger now and into your fear so you know you've progressed right so you definitely know you've progressed you've gotten out of the anger place and into your fear place which is progress by the way most people think it's not but it is right but but what needs to happen now is to get out of the fear place and into the grief place and that means allowing some of the allowing yourself to grieve about how frightened you are like you're just very frightened you're very frightened about what's going to come up how much it's going to come up as you said you know your life and everything and and you're very very frightened about what's going to come up as a result so my suggestion is to start allowing yourself to actually feel what's the worst about the worst allow yourself to feel what you feel is the worst of all this like what's the worst possible thing that could happen here and then allow yourself to start crying about what's the worst possible thing that could happen it doesn't mean to be it's something that will happen just what you feel will happen what you imagine will happen and allow yourself to start connecting to that so what it, what is it that you imagine will happen here when you start feeling your grief what's going to happen like what do you feel what are you afraid of here um, well I guess when I listen to all the stories that are here and um, I I feel that yes I've got that I've got that I've, I've got everything here and um, and there's a whole lot that I don't even know and and I just think well if I can feel the intellectual grief of knowing this so if I if but, I but what's going to happen when you drop all of this balls when you just let everything go when you let every everything in your life just go what's going to happen what are you afraid of really I'm not talking about now the individual things I'm talking about what's going to happen when all of this just comes and hits you when you explode as you called it what's going to happen then 
um, I don't know, but I feel I might just go crazy. Okay. Yeah. So work with that emotion. Pray mm. about that emotion. Yeah, talk to God about, are you going to go crazy? What's going to happen? You know, the, mm. truth, the truth is when we, when we come to these kind of places of terror, usually there's one or two or three core beliefs that we have that prevent us from getting from the terror or the fear down into the grief. And that's one of yours, is this, this viewpoint that you're going to go nuts. How many of you feel you're going to go nuts when you really start letting yourself feel? So there's quite a few, right? right? And that's a major blockage emotion that blocks us from actually feeling our emotions. When we get through that blocking emotion, we start to believe that we won't go nuts and that we'll be able to cope with everything. Right? But before that time, you actually believe that you are going to go nuts and that you're not going to cope with everything. That's what you believe. And that belief needs to leave you, just like all other beliefs. It can only leave you through an experience of feeling like you're going to go nuts and feeling like it's going to be so bad and then allowing yourself to grieve that feeling, you know, like to feel the grief of that feeling. Now, I feel there's probably a couple more of those kind of blocking feelings for you with your fear into your grief. But if you, all I do is I sit down and I imagine what's the worst possible thing that I could imagine happening in this situation? And whatever first comes to my mind is what I just go with. And I just imagine the worst, like the worst possible scenario and just allow myself to connect with that emotionally. Because it doesn't mean it's true, right? It just allows, it's, it's what you feel is true. So go with that, let yourself feel all that. And if you let yourself feel that and go through it, you'll find you'll come out the other end no longer believing it. My father has recently died and um, I have had um, um, some way of connecting with him through someone and he is in quite a dark place mm -hmm. and um, my mother is still alive and I feel she might be even in a darker space mm -hmm. and I'm the product of both these my parents as biological parents and I have always this fear that I if I died, I'd go to this very dark space and it frightens me. Um, so I realised that it went to another escape of saying, I realised when I was born, it, I constantly had this feeling of, I wish I was never born, with the understanding that this is incorrect, but feeling that all the time. Um, because if I die, I still got to deal with it. So if I wasn't born, I wouldn't have had to know any of this, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So there is this so much fear of um, who I am, what I've done in my ignorance to myself, but also all the people I've affected, and it's it's very it's very. Um, It's almost like beyond disgust and disbelief. It's, it's almost horrifying to feel that, mm -hmm. that one can be so um, the opposite of what God created me to be. You know? and now you're getting closer to this. You do now. Do this to you. Just yeah. cry about what you just said. Yeah, thank you. you need to yeah, you'll get through it. I've, I've felt so much self-disgust um, myself. I realise that a lot of the times when I say to myself, I wished I would never been born, I wished I'd never been created, um, I was actually avoiding grief of this. So in other words, I created that, I wished I'd never been born, I wished I'd never been created, to avoid just feeling the grief of what I feel about myself in the end. And sometimes you hit emotions that you, you feel like, uh, I mean, uh, self-disgust is one for me at the moment as well. And I, I just pray so much, Lorleen, about it. Like, God, I don't want to feel, I don't want to feel all the shame I have about myself. I don't want to feel how far I am from you. I don't want to actually turn the light on and see my own soul. Um, 
because I feel so far, like I feel so unworthy to be sitting in this chair, you know. And that helps. Just talk to God about that. Yeah.